yeah, that, that will work. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I hope you have a great two days here. I hope, uh, I hope you have fun, as we've been told quite a few times today. So be sure to do that. Uh, I wasn't nervous before going on stage. I'm usually, I usually never am, but I, I, we have all just been uh, compared to Copernicus, so I feel that the pressure is on. So just be aware of, of what you do and what you say around here because you, you have to uh, try and do great things at least. So the things I'm going to talk about uh, today are obvious to me and they may be obvious to many of you and I hope they are. But what I learned during my exchange program in the United States, I was part of the second round of Digicom.net, is that a lot of young people don't get this. And there are certain things that I'm used to hearing from people of a certain age, let's just put it that way. They are not really comfortable with the speed at which the world is changing. But when I hear people my age or even younger complaining about the fact that they don't like Kindle, they don't like e-readers because it's not a real book. Because you know, you know these people, like the hipster ones. They always say that it's not a real book, so I don't like it. Because a real book, it, the page makes a sound when you turn it, and they have a smell. And I'm like, books are not for smelling, though. Get some flowers, get a nice perfume. A book is a carrier of information. If there's a way to put a thousand books in one small thing, not ruin your vision, like not have it affect your eyes, and carry it with you and save some trees along the way, let's do that. That's a great idea. And many people don't get that. And I assure you that a few years back, not too long ago, when they invented the print thing, there were a lot of people that were saying, oh, these are real books. A real book should be handwritten because it has personality. Someone has put some effort and some soul into it. This is all the machine produced stuff. This is not real literature. And now we have people complaining about this. And unfortunately, I have many, many journalists my age complaining about the fact that journalism is changing too much. And nobody cares about the real big stories anymore. Because there was a few years ago, people, journalists would spend, spend months on a single story. And then they would publish it in a newspaper and everybody was talking about it. And now everybody's getting their news from Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and stuff like that. And you can absolutely do that. You can sit there and complain that the world is changing. Or you can figure out how to get your information that you believe in to those young people because they have a lot of it. We live in, in a time where we have more access to information than ever before and yet we have so many misinformed people. 20, 30 years ago we had people that didn't know much. Now we have people that know a lot is just not the truth. They, they are being fed lies all the time through those tools that some journalists just don't want to use because they don't get there or it's stupid. But teenagers get their information and their news and their political views from Snapchat. That's the truth of it. If you want them to believe you and to believe in what you believe, you have to go there. In 2011, I discovered one of the most amazing things I have ever seen in my life. It's called YouTube. I spend hours every day on it and I love it. And I was talking to Artur actually uh, and another friend and I said, let's make a YouTube channel. Let's have someone like a young person from Moldova commenting on current political events. Let them speak their mind because, you know, we live in a country where the media is not exactly to be trusted. It took us two years to finally find someone good enough for the job, like to, to be the face of this YouTube show. It's called The Duck Show, by the way. And when we started it, most people I know, most journalists, most actors, most people I know, they didn't believe in it. They said that it's not going to work, Moldovans won't get it, and it's just a waste of time. The first few months we, we went out and celebrated every time we got a thousand views. And then a few months passed and people started sharing it a lot because people don't trust the media. 
and they saw a regular person that's not being paid by anyone, just speaking their mind, cursing sometimes, and saying things that nobody dares to say on TV. In another few months, politicians in the country started sharing its, his videos. In another few months, the leader of the opposition started being a fan. In another few months, people that I have on my show, because I, I have a political talk show, like on actual old-fashioned national television, they will, were all saying that, that guy works with you, right? He's amazing. And in like a year time, we were getting calls from ambassadors. Um, the ambassador of Romania wanted a meeting because they wanted to know where do you get your information? How are you so popular? Why do people listen to you so much? And the answer was very simple. Because people, th the tools you are using are old fashioned. They have seen something new. A guy that is speaking his mind, that is saying the things that we all think. And now suddenly it's out there. It's in the open. Since 2013, we have three major video bloggers that do the same thing, basically, more or less. And being a funny guy on Facebook or on YouTube, commenting or making fun of politicians or, and politics became like a trend. It's like a huge thing. And some people started making money out of it, which is also a great thing. And then I was a part of Digicom Net. I went to the United States. Uh, it's an amazing program, by the way. Uh, if, if any of you, uh, some of you haven't been and you have a chance to, if you're going to do just one exchange program in your life, let it be this one. It's great, trust me. So I, I was lucky enough to have a fellowship for two weeks in New York City at Now This News. You all know Now This News? It's a video storytelling project, the new thing on Facebook, like it's video and text. And do you know no about now this news or not? Yeah. Okay, some people do. Great, thank you. And I worked there for two weeks and I said, oh, this isn't complicated. This is easy. And nobody does that in Moldova. So why not be the first? And then I came back and with the help of my uh, great friend Artur and couple other people, we hired some people, we did a little bit of training, and we started doing what they're doing just in Moldova. We were starting, we started making a video storytelling project in our country about our situation. And uh, we've been on the market for four months now, five months almost, we, when, since we launched. And look at that, it's called Cometa, we're the first media partners of this event. But it actually is phenomenal. Some of our videos uh, already surpassed half, half a million views. And keep in mind that we live in a country of two and a half million people or three million people. So that's a lot for us. And not everybody's on Facebook. Thank you, Artur. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for celebrating our success. Uh, um, I, I need to know how much time do I have left? No, because I, I, I need to know what direction I'm going in. Okay. We did both the things that I told you about, like Cometa and the, that video blog, that launched the idea that video blogging is a, is a good thing and people started doing it and they were getting more popular faster than we did in the beginning because it took, it took us months to get some views. We did that with no money. I mean, we didn't have funding for any of those projects in the beginning. And we still don't get funding for the video blog thing. We just do it. We have regular jobs and we do it because we insist on keeping it honest and clean and not have every, anyone get involved. We had no money. We had no government support. We didn't need anyone to come and give us advice or stuff because it's all out there. YouTube is out there. Uh, every, ev every project that you want to do, you can find something similar or a lot of things that can help you, help you build it up. And journalism is so important nowadays because it was said just before me. There's a lot of misinformation out there. I don't like to use the word propaganda, but like propaganda. There's a lot of it. And we see, what it's ha what is, we see the trends in the world with populism getting so much results, so, much, so many results. People lie and other people believe them. 
and then everything goes to hell eventually. I think that we as journalists, we as young people, even if we're not journalists, but we have tools to encourage other journalists to promote their work, I feel that it's our duty to make sure that the truth gets to the people, especially the young people. And you know what? If you're an investigative journalist and at some point you have to make a story of, of consisting of six words and a picture, you do that. You figure out a way to put your entire investigation in six words and a picture and you get it to them. Or make it a, a two-parter. Because the world is not going to stop changing. It's going to keep going. It always does. Progress is something that is going to happen regardless of how much we complain of how, or how much we re resist it. And I think it's so, so important if you love your job, if you care about the things that you write about or you talk about, you go home and, if you f and, and, and tell every young person you know, get a cell phone. Turn it on, and for the love of God, turn it in landscape mode, because this is not good. Turn it in landscape mode, and just film yourself, and just say what you want to say. If you, if you have seen something on the news, just make a short video about it and post it on Facebook, because that's how young people communicate nowadays. It's all visual. And... Throughout this conference, you're going to have people telling you how to market this whole thing and, and how to uh, use the right, I don't know, Facebook or whatever tools to promote it and stuff like that. What I'm trying to convince you to do is go home and find every young, thinking, sane person you know and encourage them to speak their mind. In Eastern Europe, in Central Asia, in, yes, I'm going to say it, Russia, in a lot of countries, the media has lost its power. It has a lot of influence on the older generation, but it has no influence at all on the young generation. People, in, people don't watch my show, young people, because, you know, they don't have time to sit through an hour of a, a long and boring interview with the prime minister. But if you make a video and tell them in three minutes what they need to know, what's essential, the next time the guy does something, they're going to get mad because they're going to know the facts. And if, you, and, and if you as professionals do not encourage your young people in your countries to speak their mind, the media is going to die. I promise you it will. Or it will transform into something you will not be want to be associated with. So... What I'm trying to say is that journalism doesn't need saving. It, it, do, it, it, it doesn't need you to come in and save it. It just needs you to bring more people in. Because just like democracy, it was said today, and I totally agree, is about people, and it's made by people, not by governments. Journalism is made by people. The stories are about people, and they are made by people. And once you understand that, you don't need to be a professional to be a journalist anymore. You don't need to study four years in a university to be able to speak your mind and to get information across and to make it go viral maybe. So the sooner we all get that, the sooner we understand that the tradition that we, we, we care about so much is actually detrimental to our work, the sooner we embrace every new thing that you see there's a Snapchat, or there's a new app, be the first one on that app. Be the first journalist in your country to use it. And when the, by the time it gets popular and everybody's on it, you will be the most followed person there. Because you are the first. And that's very, very important. And you are the trendsetter. You set the note. I really care about this. And it saddens me when I hear people that are 30 years or even younger, people... 25 year olds complaining that oh it's too much it's this video thing this new thing it's here dude or girl it's happening you won't stop it 
Social networks are happening, video storytelling is happening, and video blogging is the greatest form of journalism yet. Because it gets you the raw thoughts from people. And that's the most important and powerful reality check you would ever get. It's not polished. It's not constructed by rules. It's how it is. It's truly the world as it is. Keep your eye on that. Pretty much all I wanted to say is in the title of this talk, journalism is changing. It is going to change. You have to deal with it. And you have two options. You can either keep up and find ways to reinvent yourself or get out of the way and let us do our jobs. Because this complaining is not going to get us anywhere. Listen to every other speaker on this conference, get the ideas, and please take your cell phones out and do contemporary journalism. Don't complain so much. Thank you.